So October is finally upon us and I made a promise to make a video every day this month so I figured I'd start things off with a personal story. Now this story takes place in Rochford Bridge in County Westmeath, Ireland. If you're not familiar with Ireland, Westmeath is almost in the very dead centre. It borders Ross Common which is where the actual centre of Ireland is. And Rochford Bridge is a very small village just outside Mullingar and the local Catholic Church had a common of mercy which was in operation from 1896 and it was continually inhabited by nuns till 2016. And the nuns that were there in that common of mercy were actually in operation in the village itself for over 150 years by that point. And my Aunt Geraldine herself was born just up the road in a village called Milltown Pass and that's actually the same house where my grandma was born and she was one of 13 siblings. And growing up in such a small religious society certainly had its effects on basically the family as a whole, but Geraldine in particular actually grew up intending to be a nun and joining that convent that I mentioned, but she later changed her mind on that. I wanted to provide a little bit of backstory there just because it does sort of relate to the paranormal experiences that went on in her house. Now the house itself stands about 300 meters from the Catholic church and the convent, so it's, it's literally just around the corner. And they moved in there in the 1970s after they got married. From what I've heard, the house was very run down when they first moved into it and they kind of built it up. Now in 2013, my uncle Seamus, which was Geraldine's husband, his mother actually fell ill with Alzheimer's and Geraldine took her into the house to care for her. And she told me a few stories. She said uh, one, one thing in particular she did, she would sit in the kitchen all day in this particular chair. And when it came to around 10 o'clock in the evening, or 10 o'clock at night, I should say, she would tell everyone to basically go to bed. And she didn't actually stay in that house for more than a year before she passed away. But Geraldine cared for her right up to the very end and she died in a room in the house. Now fast forward a little bit to 2015, so two years later, I went over there with my wife and we stayed at Geraldine's house. And we didn't know anything about any of the you know, things that were going on at that time. But I did obviously know that the mother-in-law passed away there. And we were staying there for roughly two weeks and towards the end of our stay, we were sat in the living room watching TV and Geraldine came into the kitchen so we sort of relocated. The kitchen and the living room were sort of one room. She sort of opened it up a little bit so there's no doorway in between. And so we walked up into the kitchen leaving the TV on and Geraldine listened to the radio a lot so she turned the radio on, had the music going. We were sat just having general conversation and as soon as it hit 10 o'clock both the TV and the radio switched off. And we didn't even notice when it happened, it was a few minutes later when we suddenly realised everything was off and then that was when we asked, did, did you turn something off there? And that's when Geraldine basically opened up and told us about these things that were happening. And she basically said this has been happening often and that's when she told me the story of how the mother-in-law would tell them to go to bed when it hit 10pm. And she mentioned most nights when they went off to bed, they would hear the kitchen light flick on and then flick off again, almost as if someone was looking around to make sure everyone was in bed. And she also brought up an incident that happened a few nights prior to this, when we were all asleep. We were in the house at this point, but we were asleep. And she said she woke up to the sound of dishes sort of clanging together in the kitchen sink. And she got up to see what was going on. She, she kind of thought we were awake, maybe you know trying to get something or banging for some reason anyway. When she went into the kitchen, there was no one there. And she also mentioned before we got there, this was I think a couple of months before, she has a young granddaughter that stays with her and she has her own bedroom and she said she was sat in the bedroom and her bedroom door basically closed like very slowly and that pretty much terrified her to the point that she did not want to stay in the house anymore. One thing that's always struck me about this story is obviously with my aunt being very Catholic she has a supply of holy water in the house and she used to sprinkle the whole house before going to bed and nothing would happen but on the particular night when the dishes were banging together it just happened to be one of the nights she forgot to bless the house. And I mean, I was brought up Catholic, but I've never had that strong belief in the Catholic faith, but I'd be more inclined to be of that faith than sort of, you know, regular Christian. But I've never sort of been a practicing Catholic, but that thing sort of struck me in particular. And although all these signs point to it being obviously the mother-in-law that was haunting the house, I still thought it was an intriguing story and I thought it was worth sharing. And, and like I said, I want to kick off October with like just a personal story. And I've not actually been back to Geraldine's house since 2015, but I'll definitely be going back in the future. But I'm sure there'll be an update to this one. I'm, I've not heard 
any updates recently, but as far as I know, things are still happening. So I hope you enjoyed this little personal County Westmeath ghost story. I'll be back again with another video tomorrow and every day this month. I'll look out for those, and until then, go around my hugging.